Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 28 of the Player to Player podcast. I'm Kirk. I'm Luke. And today, uh, we've got a lot of news for you. We're going to go over the news. Uh, we're going to follow up on the games that we eShop, I shop, you shopped last week. Yep. Um, and that's pretty much it. So yeah. let's just get right into things. We've First, quite a bit of news. So we do have, we've got a lot of news today. Um, first and some blues no some sad things no blues no no sad things no nope. oh sweet just news i don't know what i was thinking me either so the dual sense i just um, wanted to rhyme oh dual sense dual sense edge dual sense edge stop i thought we were rhyming nope oh. I, i'm sorry okay so the dual sense edge. Again. <laughs> what is this? Uh, the dual sense edge is the new, um, essentially, pro controller or the equivalent of the Elite series um, f- from Xbox. Um, okay. uh, I'll just read the excerpt from Kotaku. It says the, or this is actually from the PlayStation blog via Kotaku. Uh, it says the dual sense edge wireless controller features a host of hardware and soft ba- software based personalization options including button remapping, the ability to fine-tune stick sensitivity, triggers, options to swap between multiple controller profiles, and a unique on-controller user interface. Which, that's really cool um, and unique because Nintendo offers button remapping, but not profiles. And Xbox offers button remapping. I actually don't know if Xbox has profiles for that. Um, I'm not sure. But essentially what you could do is you could have your own loadout for the controller, and I could have my own loadout for the controller. Or... You could have a Resident Evil loadout, a Spider-Man loadout. Um, oh, that's cool. And do it that way. Yeah, um, that's neat. Yeah, the, and this thing looks really sweet. Uh, we'll put, we have a picture up in the thumbnail, but um, it adds an extra light underneath the thing. Or wait, no, that light's always there. Mm-hmm. Um, it Maybe it's just always blue. It just looks different. The light looks different for some reason. <laughs> huh, okay. Um, but they, the colors are a little bit different. Sure. Um, so it's white and then black in the middle, just like the PS5. Okay. Instead of white all the way around. Right. Um, and the touchpad has all the X, all the X's and squares and triangles and circles right. um, that the back has. So it adds that nice texture. Um, and then obviously the sticks are adjustable um, heights and intensity, tensegrity. Um, and it has the paddles on the back. I, so it's pretty neat. It's pretty nice. I just, I've, they've never been for me. Well, I really think this is cool. Um, and it's releasing January 2023. For two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, cool. And that's why it's not. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I, I, I bought. I've bought ones for Xbox, and then been like, "This is two hundred dollars. I should sell this." Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. So I, I maybe it's because I haven't done like any like. Uh, I don't want to say professional, but like like super competitive first yeah, person I've never shooters done any or super anything hardcore like that. Stuff, yeah. You know, I mean, like I played like they, Call of Duty. They do and feel I've done, really nice. Done well like they're online, super premium. You know, but and I don't, I don't know. I've used controllers with paddles before, and yeah. if anything, they they annoy me. I don't totally. Like the, yeah, but I can understand if you get used to them. Response time, like never having to take your fingers off the thumbsticks, is probably faster yeah response time for stuff. yeah but pro- it's just two hundred dollars is a price point two hundred is a lot yeah this lot. isn't i will never also you don't have a ps5 so true <laughs> but hey i could have a ps5 controller my, my only defense for these controllers is that they're, they're they are super comfortable they are really nice they feel premium yeah um and when you buy a controller you're gonna have this for the next five to six years of the generation like this is going to be the thing you always yeah. use this is more important in my mind than the actual console in terms of like daily sure. regular i yeah. mean obviously you're using the console too but like right yeah the, the part you, you interact yeah. with is like, the controller right. you know yeah so uh, and then the the cheap regular 40 dollar xbox and and well i guess the playstation ones are like 80 but those wear out faster they do um and like even after like a month of use on my dual sense, like I'm seeing the powder build up on the sticks mm. and like buttons are kind of wearing out. Yeah. Like the button still works, but it's like wearing right. off of the you know. So they're nice, but it's not for everybody. Two hundred dollars yeah. is a lot. That's like four games. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If I was gonna buy a pro controller though, it would be from Xbox Design Lab. So this is rad because um as of I think yesterday or the day before, um 
it's been up for a while now by the time this podcast comes out. Um, but the Elite Series 2 was added to Microsoft's Design Lab, which if you don't know what that is... Design it, Lab is so cool. It's super cool. It lets you mix and match the buttons and colors um, and, like, the cover. Um, and the Elite Series 1 is only $150, which is actually... Yeah. I think that's, that's awesome. cheaper than the normal Elite Series. Um, yeah, because well, the Elite so, Series so 2 if you, if is you just the buy the Elite Series 2 the bundle for sixty dollars, that it, makes it more expensive. Well, if you just buy the Elite Series 2 right. by itself, it's one hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty hmm. sure. Yeah. Okay. So this is cheaper than that, but it doesn't come with the case or the, uh, right. the sticks and stuff. Right. If you want that stuff, it's an additional sixty dollars, which makes it two hundred and ten dollars. Which is thirty dollars more than the right. Elite Series do normally, but, but you, you get the customized. Can you customize one. the case and everything too? I don't think the case. Mm, I'm not positive about, right. about that, but I think all the extra paddles and sticks you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Design Lab is so cool. It's super addicting. Have, have you done it yet for the Elite Series? No, I haven't. It's so cool, I'm, Luke. Yeah, I'll for sure. So the metal inside that. the thumbsticks you can color. You can That's add cool. LEDs and stuff. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Um. The the me- and it's cooler because you're customizing metal parts too, so right. they're like anodized. Right. Um, uh, the I think the grips you can customize the color, the everything. I mean, you can. Sweet. We got a picture in the thumbnail too of just like a ridiculous one. You yeah. can change almost everything on the controller, cool. um, which is really cool. Yeah, I was so. looking forward to that. Uh, and this is a it's a great controller, and it, since it's like fifty dollars cheaper than the other one, and you get to customize it. Yeah, I mean, totally. like that's that's a yeah, solid that's deal. A super cool deal. I actually I saw <clears throat> I saw someone did design lab controllers for his groomsman for his wedding. Oh, that's cool. As, as the groomsman gets, cool. they, they played games together, so he got oh, that's them rad. a controller, and that's then it super said cool. groomsman on it, and yeah, so yeah, design lab is super cool. You can do all sorts of neat stuff with it. The, for whatever reason. My favorite use of Design Lab, even though I don't care at all about football, is football team controllers. Yeah. Because they look so good. Because, yeah, they do. Just because football teams have stretch, such strong color profiles, mm-hmm. like they're they're always opposite. Like you, Broncos are like blue and orange, right. so it's really high contrast. Steelers black and yellow. You know things like gold. Is it? Yeah, it's black. I think it's, it's yellow. Black and gold. Pretty sure it's, it's yellow. Actually, marigold. If you look at it on the color wheel. Okay, so, so marigold is that yellow. Makes it gold. So <laughs> nope whatever it's not merry yellow <laughs> whatever <laughs> stupid um so yeah that's that's that about that so yeah, super cool um next up we have uh, a list of games that they've added this month there uh most of these are added already the so next game ones pass. uh will be coming out tomorrow oh yeah what did i not you say just that they added oh yeah a so, bunch of games they yeah, added well I'm, i can read it uh, scavenger <laughs> hunt see if you can find where they added them anyways start over game pass has new games this <laughs> month <laughs> Um, most of these have been added already. Some will be added tomorrow at the time of uh, the podcast. Um, but first, go, go ahead. We have a Plague Tale Requiem. Is this the second one? This is a brand new one, yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, Amnesia Collection, which is, this is... Uh, so this is that, uh, how many, uh, what is that? That's, um, well, they also added Rebirth. So I'm assuming Collection is Machine for Pigs and Dark Descent. So it's a trilogy? Uh, well, no, because they also have re- Rebirth separate. So well, I'm Amnesia saying the collection, collection would be the trilogy. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Rebirth is included in that because I, the I think the Amnesia well, I don't collection, think they would have added it separately if it was right. And that's what I'm saying. I think the Amnesia Collection is just Machine for Pigs and Dark Descent. Gotcha. Um, then we got Amnesia Rebirth. Are these are they good? Dark Descent is is that the second one? That's the first one. Oh, okay. Machine for Pigs, I didn't finish. It was it was all right. Um, Have you played the third one? Yeah, I played a little bit of Rebirth, and I I probably played three four hours. The first one you really liked, it was right? enough. Or for is me that Outlast? Not go back of. to it. Um, the first one, the first one's decent. It's not yeah. like it's. Is this these, the one I played with you and Jackson? No, we played Outlast. Oh, other. okay. Um. <laughs> The Amnesia games, I personally feel like, were better when they came out, because since then... So, Amnesia, to my knowledge, popularized the insanity meter. It, they, it's not... They didn't make... Definitely like, they didn't not. invent it, but they kind of popularized it, from what I understand. Yeah. And now, like, all horror games have the insanity meter, mm. so it's like... That's annoying. It's just kind of a... Yeah. A, not every horror game, but it's it's a much more common mechanic. Um, you know? Have you played the medium? No. Did you know they're making a show about that? 
I did not. Neat. Anyways, um, I'm pretty sure the medium also has an insanity. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Yeah, it's a it's a common it's a common thing. Yeah. Now, um, in, in I horror I games, don't know so. if this was the first game that did it. Fun fact, also non sequitur. Um. Uh, what is it called? The the GameCube Nintendo horror game. It's yeah, a Nintendo I, one. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um. It was the darkness first one something. Too. Oh, it was the first one. Yeah. So that one was cool because the way that that one would work was the higher the insanity meter went up, it actually, it didn't mess with your character so much as it messed with you as a player. Um, so it would do Eternal things. Eternal darkness. It would do things like cut the signal to your TV. It would do things like oh, pretend really? that, that, yeah, it would pretend that your save file got deleted. Huh. It would do all kinds of things like that. Um which is pretty cool. It would so. also do things in game, like it would it would make your camera like start to wobble like this in game. Um, yeah, Eternal Darkness. It's definitely it's on my list. Well, that's what I'm saying. But it, it was more of like messing with you as right. the player than yeah your character. Um, which you know yeah that was neat. That's that's Anyways. cool. But then we got Phantom Abyss, Soma. Do you know what Phantom Abyss is? I don't. You know Soma though. Yeah, yeah I know Soma. That's another horror game. Uh, yep. Is it good? I haven't played it. Oh, okay. Um, but Persona, it has a good reputation, I've heard. Yeah, it yeah. does. Uh, and it, it's on Game Pass, so that's a good time to play Persona it. Persona 5 Royal. Heck yeah. And then these Which are is the great games. because that's a $60 game on Switch. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So That's yeah. such a... Game and Pass is... PlayStation. Game yeah. Pass is game, the best. Yeah, totally. Uh, you get at least 100 ones that are Persona. coming tomorrow. Okay. Frog Detective, The Entire Mystery. That's just a PC, though. Uh, oh, yes. Um, Gunfire Reborn... What what does that say? S- Signalist. Signalist. Yeah, I don't know what those are, but um, and then these are the games that are no longer on Game Pass. Well, they're leaving as of um October thirty first. Uh, Alan Wake: American Nightmare, which is the DLC for Alan is Wake. Is it good? I've played it. Mm. Uh, Backbone. You should play it. You've got a few days. Uh, yeah, well, I own it on PC too. Oh, okay. Um, I'm probably gonna wait for the the remake because I'm assuming they'll do the DLC too. You're hoping they'll do the DLC. Yeah. You're hoping they won't charge extra for the DLC. True. For like $30. <laughs> Backbone, Bassmaster Fishing 2020. Oh, two. no. I know. That's, man, what a bummer. Game Pass is going to lose all their subscribers mm-hmm. after that. Non-Guns Doppelganger Edition, Project Wingman, Second Extinction, Sniper Elite 4, The Forgotten City. So lots of really Forgotten cool City stuff coming. And Alan Wake are the only ones leaving that I'm like, oh, yeah. bummer. Lots of really cool stuff coming and some lame a stuff chunk leaving. Of like, great yeah, stuff leaving. Game Pass is like getting continually better. Like, like yes, they add and take away stuff, but I feel like Game Pass is better today than it was a year ago, Most and then definitely. better a year ago than yep. it was two years ago. Well, and then you know? th- now that it includes EA Play, you get all the EA Play games yeah. on it too, and that's, that's <laughs> we're insane. not sponsored by the way. <laughs> uh, but if you're listening, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> give us please a call. call us. Uh, next, we have uh, the best-selling games of September. This from the latest numbers. This is what we have, uh, and FIFA 23 taking the top, followed by Madden 23, and then NBA 2K 23. So lots of that sports makes games. Me sick. Uh, They're I also mean, all EA games. Since they all come out around that this time, like August September. Football season starts. Basketball. Yeah season start i don't know i'm not a basketball fan uh but then we have splatoon 3 last of us part one uh that's interesting that's the it's the remake oh i didn't know that was out yet yeah oh shoot i was waiting for that oh well it's out cool (laughs) uh uh, tmnt cowbunga collection saints row jojo's bizarre adventure all-star battle what is that it's an anime game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Elden Ring, Mario Kart 8 still. That's actually crazy it's that high on the list. JoJo's uh, JoJo's adventure. is super popular, but like video game adaptations of anime. Yeah, I mean, this is only for September, really but did it come still, out recently? I think so. Mario Kart 8 still. That's you know, wild. Followed, Every single month. Followed by Minecraft. That's not as wild. Marvel, Spider-Man, Lego Star Wars, Skywalker Saga, and Super Smash Bros. Wow, that's, and that's cool that Smash is still that high. Especially these are, because it's not being supported anymore. Let's see, out of top 15, how many Nintendo games did we have in here? Three? Um, one, two... Splatoon, Mario Kart, three, and yeah. Smash. Yeah. And then, uh, year-to-date, 
and so those did not most of those did not include digital sales well all, xbox and so. oh yeah you're right yeah xbox and switch digital sales are included period um and then for oh, for a few of them for a few of them yeah no digital sales are included and then this is the year to date top 10 games we have elden like ring selling yep elden ring is number one is number one wow lego star wars skywalker saga uh madden 23 dang pokemon legends arceus whoa horizon let's go. forbidden west mlb the show 22 call of duty vanguard that's actually mlb's that's cool and interesting and not surprising at all because it's the first year that it's been on Wait. xbox and switch yep call of duty vanguard Gran Turismo 7, Kirby the Forgotten Land, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and then Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 is top 10 for... The... Yeah. Don't get it. I know. I don't I don't get it. How do you not own this game Luke, already? Luke, that game came out <laughs> 10 years ago. I don't understand. And it's in the top 10 for this year, best-selling, period. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. And that's digital sales wild. are not included is either. That, do you know that? Yeah. That doesn't Seems include digital after. sales. Yeah. That's insane. Yep. That means probably, Mario Kart 8 is probably, probably four more up the one. list. Yeah. No, not number one. You don't think so? No. For the year? Yeah, no. It hmm. didn't beat Elden Ring. Oh, okay, that's fair, I guess. But it's probably three or four more up the list. That's insane. Yeah. So those are best-selling games year-to-date and for September of this year. Crazy. Uh, next, Steam just broke a record for all-time concurrent users. Oh, wow. Do you want to take a guess at what it is? Uh, 10 million. So in 2015, 12 years after the service launch, Steam set up a record of concurrent users. The number of individuals logged into the service was 10 million. So oh, that I, was 20. I wasn't reading too far ahead. So what's your, what's your guess now? So 2015, 2015, 10 million users. 30 million. 30 million. All right. 2017, Steam hit a new record of 14 million. Okay. In March of 2020, which makes sense, pandemic, yeah. they hit 20 million. Oh, okay. Steam got to 28 million users earlier this year. Wow. And now in late October, Steam hit the nice round number of 30 million. Let's go. With the peak number of users logged Let's on go. earlier today, standing at 30 million, 32,005. Wow. Which happens to be more users than the entire population of Australia. <laughs> what a random fact. Just fun little wow, fact. Wow, that's cool. Um, so if everyone in Australia was using Steam at the same time, it would be less than 30 million. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, I'm blown away that 10 million more users since the pandemic. Yeah, that's crazy. Like the peak pandemic well, numbers well, it wasn't, didn't even it wasn't, hit 30 million. I mean, the pandemic did a lot for the industry in that it not only was everybody at home, but because everybody was at home, there was a bunch of new gamers too so i think right people you know picked up their um pandemic hobbies or whatever yeah and a lot of it seems like it was gaming because it's it's gone 10 million more yeah in the last yeah. two years it's that's crazy. insane it's crazy i think i think that probably has a lot to do with um playstation games being added at such a high rate recently Definitely. Too. um but i mean how many people have been trying to get a ps5 and then couldn't and then all of these ps5 games are coming oh to PC, i didn't even think and of then it they like were that. like well i'm gonna take my playstation fund and then well put it into most of the playstation PC, games that are being added aren't ps5 games but the new ones are go but ps5 games are gonna be on PC. eventually yeah, yeah i mean they'll be late but if you can't get your hands on a ps5 you might be playing the game i think the newest game like, they've yeah. added is spider-man and that's a two-year-old game at this point yeah so i mean we're two years into the ps5 and people still don't have it so yeah totally you still might be playing it sooner if yeah, you've got it on pc sure. then i mean so wait spider-man must be three or four years old then 2018 right no way yeah 2018 oh wow that's crazy so four years old yeah but well then that's probably not the newest one then yeah, no, because isn't God of War on? God of War is newer God than Spider-Man. not newer than Spider-Man. Oh. Well, never mind then. Anyways. Uh, this is kind of a neat little news thing. Fallout 4 is getting a free PS5 and Xbox Series X and S upgrade in 2023. Oh, cool. That's it's already gotten some, I think. Um, but this, no, is the, this is the final. <laughs> As part of its Fallout series celebrations, Bethesda has announced the follow that Fallout 4 will be getting a current gen update for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S, as well as several bug fixes and bonus Creation Club content. 
Similar to several modern games such as God of War Ragnarok, players will be able to choose between a performance mode for high frame rates or a quality mode that prioritizes 4K resolution gameplay. Bethesda didn't mention more than that, but the studio did say the update will be free and arrives in 2023. Cool. I always love to see uh, support for old games. Yeah, so that's always awesome. down for that. This is super interesting, and this took me a little bit of time to, to dig into this, but um, studios are apparently asking Xbox to drop Xbox Series S requirement. So if you want to make a game for Xbox Series X, it has to be able to be played on this Series S right now, too. Okay. So let's get into this. It's kind of a, it's kind of a long little rabbit hole here. Uh, a game developer has claimed that many studios are trying to drop a requirement that their games have to launch on the Xbox Series S. VF VFX artist Ian McClure said, Many developers have been sitting in meetings for the past year desperately trying to get Series S launch requirements dropped. Studios have been through one development cycle where Series S turned out to be an albatross around the neck of production. And now that games are firmly being developed with new consoles in mind, teams do not want to repeat that process. So this developer... Wow. I, I can't believe I didn't put a studio down. Um... They made, they seem to, which is interesting. It seems like they're making like, uh, so they made Surgeon Simulator 2, um, seem, just some other random stuff like that. I forget the name of the developer. Okay. It's by no means a big name. Sure. Um, but it's ki kind of interesting, right? Well, and they're claiming that many developers have been. Right. Well, let's talk about Gotham Knights because okay. a Gotham Knights developer says Series S held back the game. Oh, interesting. So. The Gotham Knights executive producer said on Discord, uh, I know many of you are wondering about the availability of performance mode for Gotham Knights on consoles. Due to the types of features we have in our game, like providing a fully untethered co-op experience in our high, highly detailed open world, it's not as straightforward as lowering the resolution and getting higher FPS. For this reason, our game does not have a performance slash quality toggle option and will run at 30 frames per second on consoles. Whoa. So this was a big disappointment to everyone who was looking forward to gotham knights yeah uh and then sh one of the i mean 30 is plenty like it's fine 60s well yeah but i mean better, it's, an, but it's an action game it's, yeah but you know, it's not like, a shooter though like no it's not but it's still the fact that you can't just yeah the, the, the for option sure. is yeah, there is totally. overall disappointing yeah so then one of the visual effects artists on the game lee devinald De Devinol? Sure. Um, tweeted out a screenshot of the post. So she originally posted that in Discord, the executive producer did. And so he screenshotted it and tweeted out the screenshot with uh, his, his thoughts on it. I wish gamers understood what 60 frames per second means in terms of all the things they lose to make lose. the game run that fast. Especially t taking into account that we have a current gen console that's not much better than the last gen one. Ooh. So this got Ooh. Oof. This this little little fire. So yeah, I bet. someone tweeted at him asking specifically like what the issue was. And uh, he responded with Series S GPU mostly. Multi platform games always have to be optimized for the lowest performer. Wow. And then someone pointed out to him that the Series X is a better console than the Xbox One. And his response to that was the series s is a this, better sorry the series x is a better console than the xbox one is what someone pointed out to him yeah because he was like saying way. current gen is yeah not much right. better but yeah. it's significantly better right, right? Oh, so someone pointed that out to him yeah and his response was the series x exists though the series s the series s exists though and microsoft won't let you launch on one without the other and the entire generation of the game is hamstrung by this potato damn since then, he's deleted all his tweets and deactivated his Twitter account. Whoa! Somebody got mad? Yeah, people oh, were no. not a fan of this. And some of the Twitter replies, if you go and try and find his Twitter... So he's just a VFX artist. Correct. So his boss probably told him to... Probably. Yeah. His boss was the one who, who released the statement saying, we're not going to have performance mode. Yeah, which was uh, a very I mean, like high quality. political way right, to say exactly. that. exactly. It's 30 frames per second. That's oh, all man. That's all you're going to get, basically. Wow. And then he, he basically gets on. And, okay, tell me if I'm wrong, but this feels like studios just whining. <laughs> like, 
I mean, I I understand like having the capability to make games that run better, look better, like are sure. faster, all of that stuff, and then not being able to do that because of the series. S. But people That's, are doing it. People are doing it just fine, and then they just give you an option for performance mode. Um, yeah, but that it doesn't work with this type of game. Uh, that's that's their that's what they're saying here yeah mm. um because in order to achieve 60 frames they would have to make so many sacrifices that like it wouldn't be able uh, to i see you know sure um it's different with something like spider-man which is like a very closed experience um it's not online it doesn't involve co-op sure you know it is a huge open world but but I feel like you should be able to have that option for single player then. Because one of the things that... Uh, yeah, but but the, the single player is the same mode as the co-op. Like, people can drop in, drop out. Uh, and that's the problem. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's really also, interesting. Also, I mean, he's making it seem like the Series S is, is actually significantly less powerful. Which, Xbox has given us the impression that it's actually about the same power. Right. Um but it doesn't have a disk drive and it doesn't Yeah, have... no, he specifically said that the Series S GPU is is mostly the problem. Yeah. Yeah, and it is it is more powerful than the um Xbox One X, which was a super powerful console, right. but only slightly allegedly. Right. Uh, whereas the Series X is a huge step up. Yeah, I don't it's it's interesting. It's it's super interesting. Yeah, I've never heard somebody Talk about the Series S as that. I'm curious what um, Spawn has to say about this. Um, have you heard him talk about this I at haven't. all? I haven't. He made a video on it, and I didn't. I didn't mm. watch it, but I probably will now. Um, yeah, because um, he knows a lot about the the technology of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's really it's it's a really interesting little controversy going on in the moment yeah well i mean apparently a, a lot of developers are are wishing they didn't have to develop for the series s so they could right. make better games and to me like that 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 makes sense i don't think it sounds like whining yeah i wonder if there's some kind of also performance mode would be available on the series s version and if you do that and it makes your game lag like they're gonna blame the developers, not Xbox. Right. You know. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder if if as cloud gaming continues to improve, we could get like games that are for the Series X and available for cloud gaming on the Series S. Uh. Yeah. But that stinks. Well, that that's uh, as it continues to improve. I mean, like, yeah. Like maybe down yeah. the road that. Yeah, and maybe maybe you know how they they have the optimized for Series X and S tag. Uh huh. Maybe maybe they could do something where it's optimized for Series X. Like it'll run on the Series S, but it's gonna run way better on right. the Series X. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you can do that with the same version of a game. Like, I guess you can because mm -hmm. PC. That's yeah. kind of how. Well, it and works. that's that's what. And your Xbox of... would just know what console it's running on and like right overclock the game. Yeah yeah i don't know yeah it, it was well and that's one of the things that was was pointed out and then he he mentioned how multi-platforms are always hamstrung i by mean the... that would really suck especially with the release of unreal 5 like mm -hmm. all the things that people are able to do now like developers yeah. can do some really cool stuff and if you're able to not use some of those tools because of the series s i would be resentful for sure sure yeah i don't know it's interesting we'll see if anything and i more think comes from i it. think they're part of the gamer community too and they want to see um games move forward just as much as we do sure. you know what i mean yeah so yeah i don't know kind yeah. of a kind of a uh interesting little thing that happened so, so this next thing i didn't even know i didn't either. happened did you know about nope. this have you watched it no nope. Okay, so Resident Evil had a big showcase, apparently. Yeah, we got two show um, two big showcases last week. Yeah, the Konami one. Silent Hill and yeah. Resident Evil. We'll talk about both of them. Um, so the Resident Evil one, I didn't know about. I saw that there was a new Resident Evil 4 trailer, but I don't want to watch it. I, it's enough yeah. for me to know that they're making it. Um, so hopefully we don't dive too so deep into that. So have you played 2 and 3? Um, I've played 
two. No, I haven't played three yet. Okay, but you played two. Yeah. So you got to play three before four drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so th- we got a Resident Evil showcase. Resident Evil Village DLC adds third person camera mode. So the third person camera mode is coming to Resident Evil Village alongside the game's upcoming DLC. Oh, what? That's which crazy. Which also features a brand new story as well as new mercenaries. The DLC is scheduled to launch on October 28th, which Whoa, will be. Whoa, third. Wait, is that unheard of? I don't know if I've ever heard of this. Adding a third person camera mode to a first person shooter. I don't know if I've ever heard of it being added after the game came out. There's definitely first person shooters that have third person modes. Like what? Call of Duty. Oh, really? Yeah. All of them? No, not all of them. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, the first Modern Warfare 2, not the new Modern Warfare 2, um, had a third person option. But did it suck? Uh, I mean, it wasn't great yeah. like first person is better in that situation you know but it's a first person shooter right. like that's what it's designed right. to be so um, wow that's crazy i wonder if that's i mean it seems like well that's what two and three are is the third person um right mode but it seemed like seven and eight i mean that was their their whole thing was first person so that's crazy huh yeah, so that comes out. I mean, that's days. a more traditional Resident Evil right. camera style. Yeah, so. which is cool. That's a really neat. That's a really neat thing. Yeah, so for all all the like, uh, Resident Evil purist fans, yeah. you know, they can play it in yeah. third person. Cool. And then you can play the the demo in third person right now. Resident oh, Evil cool. Village demo returns with nice. third person mode for um, an hour. Wow. Yeah, you get sixty minutes. That's to, cool to try it out. So. And then Resident Evil 4 Remake gameplay revealed. Oh, okay. Maybe I do want to see that, actually. Uh, w- so we got we got a little bit of gameplay from, nice. from Resident Evil 4 nice. Remake. And then you can play Resident Evil Reverse ahead of launch. Resident Evil Reverse, a multiplayer game free for owners of Resident Evil Village, will enter an early access period ahead of the game's this game proper looks launch. so stupid. Um, the early access began on Sunday... And it runs until, as of listening this, tonight. You have tonight until 11 o'clock to play it. So, the full um, No, this it'll be over by then. Oh. Because today is the 26th. Oh. Well, never mind. Yeah. Early access is over. Yep. <laughs> uh, but it launches in on October 28th. So, nice. in a couple days, if you're interested, you can pick it up. So, Cool. Some cool Resident Evil news. Nice. And now let's get into Silent Hill. Do you know anything about the showcase? Nope. Tell me everything. So remember when we were you joking, watched this one, right? Uh, I, I watched some of it. Okay. I didn't watch it live, so I ended up just kind of like skipping yeah. through the announcements and watching them. Um, remember when we were joking about this being like a, a nothing pachinko machine? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. that is not the case. Yeah, no, the I told you. Hose, I told you it wasn't. Fire hose open. We got way more than. I think anyone expected. Oh, really? So they kicked it off with a Silent Hill 2 remake. Cool. Luber team, the developer behind the medium and other horror games, is remaking Silent Hill 2. The trailer for the game showed scenes from the iconic game with all new visuals. The Silent Hill 2 remake is coming to PC via Steam and will be a PlayStation 5 console exclusive for at least a year after launch. Sweet. Then we got Silent Hill Townfall, okay. which is a new game from developer No Code, the creators of Observation and Stories Untold. The teaser shared for this game offered little in the way of game details, but the implication is that it will be something different for Silent Hill. So this is kind of the theme. We didn't really get a lot of information about all the announcements, but we got okay. a lot of announcements. So this is what so this do you is know not, more than what that says because that says nothing. Not really, okay. because the trailer basically showed nothing. This is not the mainline Silent Hill. It's not a mainline Silent Hill game, though. Right. Do so you, it do, could be like like we don't know what this game could be. Do you know anything about Observation or Stories Untold? I don't. I, okay. I haven't heard of either of those. Interesting. Uh, the next that we got was this, uh, we're getting a Silent Hill movie. Okay. Christopher Gans, the director of the original 2006 Silent Hill movie, is oh. returning to create a new Silent Hill film titled Return to Silent Hill. Gans appeared during the presentation to talk about how the movie will be at an adaptation of Silent Hill 2. Wow. Filming and casting are still in the works, but Gans did have a handful of concept art to share. Interesting. So, um... I wonder. I want. Does do you know if the Silent Hill movie takes like is I have about no the idea. first game? I have no idea. It kind of sounds like it if the sequel is about Silent Hill two. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know much about Silent Hill at all, so I don't even yeah. know if it's an anthology series or if it's right. If Silent Two, I all I've heard is Silent Hill Two is one of the best games of right. all time. Yeah, I'm very excited for the yeah. remake. So sweet. Um, and then we got another new Silent Hill project. Wow, Silent Hill Ascension, which was described as an interactive video streaming experience. Oh gosh, with the tagline "Face Your Trauma Together." The multiplayer game featured a number of development partners, including Dead by Daylight creators Behavior Inter- Interactive, as well as J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Games. Oh, Little was shown or shared about the gameplay, but it appears as though it will be a form of narrative-driven multiplayer game. Huh. Have, have you ever heard of anything like this before? Not a multiplayer version. It makes me just think of um, Bandersnatch. Is that the Netflix yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that I, I didn't, I haven't, I don't know much about that, but Netflix has a man versus wild oh, one. Actually, you know what this makes me think of? What? Clue. The video series. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Man, that, that is. You remember? Quite the Cause reference. You, yeah. you watch like a video. Yep. Um, and then everybody would have their own uh-huh. pencil and paper and stuff. And depending on it would say like fast forward to this part or put in this yep. tape or whatever and then it it was somehow a fully new game of clue every time right um which is really cool so this makes me think kind of more along the lines of that yeah yeah i don't know it's it's really it's really interesting weird um, so. well that that one is like whatever the movie's kind of whatever right. but the new silent hill game and silent hill 2 remake is huge yeah that's cool that would be enough but that's not all we got. Oh, wow. We got Silent Hill F. Okay. Finally, the presentation ended with a pre-rendered trailer for a new mainline Silent Hill game. Wow. Called Silent Hill F. The trailer for the game showed a young woman walking through a Japanese town, dragging a pipe along the ground, and eventually being consumed by flowers. When the game will release and what kind of game it will be is currently unclear. Cool. So, like I said, we got a lot of announcements. Wow, that's huge. We didn't get much more than just announcements. But the next few years for Silent Hill are going to be big. Are going to be are going to be awesome. Big. So, do we have a date for Silent Hill Two remake? Mm-mm. Uh, I saw something. It's been it's been in the works for a while though. I don't. Rem- I didn't put down the date, but when I was researching it. Um, sounds like it's been in the works for quite a few years. Silent Hill um, 2 remake? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, me Nate, we got it. This Nate the Hate, um, member of the Spawn cast uh-huh. and also the Nate the Hate podcast has been talking about this for a long Silent time. Silent Hill 2 remake? Yeah. Oh, okay. At least as long as I've been following him, okay. which is almost two years, maybe yeah. longer than two years. He's been like hammering. Yes, it's coming. Yes, it's coming. He talked about Bloober well, Team. He talked about. Look at that. So, he no, I'm telling right. you, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's it. So I knew that wouldn't that's be a nothing news. announcement is all. But right. that that is way more. Oh yeah, we're way getting, more. We're getting. I um, thought at getting, best we would get a game announcement. So we're getting a mainline game, a we're mainline game, an offline two, game, like off like two interesting games. Not really sure what they are. Ascension and right, um, Townfall, and we're a remake. Silent Hill two remake, and we're and a movie, movie. based this on Silent is, two. Insane. Silent Hill 2, which yeah. is one of the like best games of all time. That's so much. That's so much. Yeah, content. if you're this a Silent Hill super awesome fan, thing for Silent this Hill fans. this almost yeah. makes up for the 15 years of of nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So cool. That's uh. That's all the news. Great. All kinds of good stuff. Have you uh? The weather has not been as great. So have you been inside playing video games? I played the video game I was supposed to play. Have you played anything else? I played it for like 45 minutes. It was fun. Uh, the game well, that I, you were supposed to play? Yeah. Oh. I, I wanted to get um, Persona, Persona 5. Oh. Um, and I've been like going to get Persona 5. And yeah. I've been like, okay, when it comes out, I'm going to get it. And then I went to the eShop and I typed it in. I looked it up. And I saw $59.99. <laughs> and I knew that it was $59.99. But for some reason, it just also felt like a lot. already played it? Yeah. So. And I've bought it twice already. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, maybe I should. How many times should. have you bought Mario Kart 8? And it's not that I want to play it again so bad. You well, just only it on once. Switch. I've oh, only okay. bought Mario Kart 8 okay. once. Oh, well, I guess I do have it on Wii U also. So twice. Oh, so twice. But it's different. Yeah. It's different. Um, Yeah, I played it and beat it on, on PS5. Oh, I guess I only bought it once. But it was like 80 bucks because it was Persona 5 Royal 
plus something. Um, I but I had Persona Five, the vanilla version, for free via the PlayStation Collection. Okay. So it felt like buying it sure. twice. Um, because buying it when you already have it is almost like buying it twice. Anyways, I want to get it for Switch, but that sixty dollar price tag hit me right in the face. I was like, oof. So I probably will get it. It just feels like a lot. Yeah. Um, I also do want to get Curse to Golf. I added it to my wish list, but cool. yeah, that's after after bucks, buying so. Pumpkin Jack and seeing Persona Five, I don't know. It, I have to be in the mood. Yeah. If I'm in the mood, I can spend two hundred fifty dollars on the eShop and not bad night. <laughs> totally. But <laughs> if I'm like spe- I, spending, I did that. if you make me buy a twenty dollar game for an eShop, iShop, U Shop, I yeah. I feel like I never yeah, want to spend so money again. I. I I literally just did that with movies, um, because I'm so I'm with watching movies. Thirty, yeah. So I'm watching thirty one horror movies right in October. Okay. You know about um, Netflix, right? Yeah. Well, some <laughs> of, I I don't picked, remember the last time I bought I a movie. I picked my list off of movies that I wanted to watch, yeah. not what was available for streaming. Ah, okay. So there's been a couple movies that have not been on any of the streaming platforms. Yeah, but I you have, can rent them which for like three dollars because Hulu, uh, um, Netflix, HBO, Disney Plus, Amazon, HBO. Amazon, yeah. Showtime. Right. I have access to all of that and yeah. even more. Yeah. And, oh, Peacock. I have ac- and like yeah. there's some movies that are just not, not streaming on. anymore. Yeah. And yeah, you can rent it for four bucks, but then you can own it for ten. Yeah. So it's like I I don't know. So I went to find uh Ready or Not, which is a movie I watched last night. And isn't that like a trash one? No, it's actually really good. Oh really? Yeah. So okay. it's the same directors who directed Scream Five. Um That's the new one. The new one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ready or not is probably what got them Scream Five. Okay, um, and I went into it expecting I, like this that trash, actually, like crappy horror movie. That's kind of crazy to think. Pretty solid. They would hand somebody Scream Five. It's insane. Yeah, that's largely why I thought Scream Five was going to be terrible because it wasn't worse. Right. Because you know, yeah. Um, but it tur- it was good. Ready or not's good. Wow. Um, but Voodoo is qu- ha- sorry. Question: You said Scream Five was the best one in a while, right? Since the second one or something. I it's my second favorite. Oh, after the first one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's what it, I thought. It's like Scream Two, Scream Five for me. Oh, Scream like, Two is your favorite. No, Scream up here. Yeah, Scream. Scream Five. Scream Five. Scream Two, like Scream Two. Barely, oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. You know? Okay. Um, and then three or four. Take it or leave it. Not great. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyways, continue. How much money did you spend on, on movies? And. They were they're having this horror movie sale, so I started yeah. to look, and I was like, maybe I'll just buy all the horror movies that I'm watching for the rest of the month. Uh-huh. And then once my cart got to like sixty dollars in movies, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. I'm just gonna buy Ready or Not That's it. for movies. I, that feels like a lot. Voodoo needs to. This is a complete side note, but Voodoo, what they need to do is you can rent the movie. At the end of the movie, it needs to give you a purchase option oh, discounted like, from your rental price. Yeah. Because uh, there's been a couple times where I've rented a movie. Are you sure they don't do that? Yeah. You're positive. 100%. I feel like I've maybe been talking about m- this for a it, long time. It might, so. have been, it might have been Google Play or YouTube movies oh, or whatever. Okay. I, f- I feel like if you rent it and then decide to buy it, it, yeah. it discounts it. Yeah, because um, I rented a movie on But I don't remember. Time, and... Uh, I rent specifically rented it because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, and I didn't want to pay double to own right. it. And then you're like, I and really like. I was like, this movie was great. I would buy it. I would have bought it for ten dollars, mm. but not fifteen dollars. Yeah, right. Like, so then uh, inevitably, the next time I went to watch that movie, I bought it. But yeah, uh, that's annoying. and that's why I just buy movies on Voodoo now. And if they suck, yeah. they suck. You, like, I mean, you did just give them the reason not to do it. You just suggested because you ended up buying it anyway. <laughs> yeah. I still think that for a lot of people that would that would yeah a no little, totally a, a buy especially you think about it you come off a really good movie and it pops up would you like to purchase this movie for a discounted rate you know yeah. like buy like yeah you, for sure the, yeah totally anyways everything I should be on Netflix <laughs> Modern Warfare two the new one started that okay um that's why the podcast wasn't ready when you got here because I was playing Modern Warfare two what do you think um. I didn't get. I got two levels into it. It looks amazing. Yeah, it looks I, I, really good. I read an article titled today called 
um call of duty's graphics are wasted on a shooter <laughs> yeah so uh there's one level which that is, is actually kind of a compliment <laughs> totally there's yeah. one level that is specifically um getting a lot of praise and it takes place in amsterdam and like it's yeah, getting so much praise that, was that the screenshot. someone did a side by side of real life amsterdam versus video game amsterdam to like compare how, yeah. how good it looks and the video game one looks better. and i didn't get to play amsterdam <laughs> because mm-hmm. i ran out of time so yeah but modern warfare 2 so far, so good. Cool. Very much looking good. forward to playing the campaign. The full game's not out yet, just the campaign. Yeah. But nice. Yep, yep. That's rad. What else? Uh, I played my eShop game. Okay. Halloween Forever. So last so week, do... you bought me Pumpkin Jack, and I bought you Halloween Forever. Yeah. Mine's called Pumpkin Jack, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um. So. Tell me about Pumpkin Jack. Well, mine was $20, and yours was 5 Mm-hmm. So... You Wait, owe me five dollars. Yes. No way. No, you owe me ten dollars. It must have been on sale no, when I picked $8. it. Eight dollars. It was not twenty dollars when I picked it. You owe me eight. You must have missed the sale. Oh, maybe it was still on sale. Then it should have been twenty dollars. How much was it? Twelve bucks. Oh, okay. So twelve seven. Divided. So you owe me three fifty. No. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> Stupid. So next time I'm picking the deluxe edition of a hundred dollar game. Cool. I won't play it. <laughs> Stupid. Um. Anyways, uh, are you going? Are you go first? Sure, go I'll first. go first because mine sucked. Oh no! Really? So, did it suck, or do you I just not like it? For about forty-five minutes, and I did not get past the first level. Oh, it's hard. It's stupid hard. Oh well, it now, said it was hard. Preface in the, this: I'm I think. terrible at two D games. Okay, like I'm bad at them. So maybe like, I should play. I don't this think game. I've ever oh, gotten that's a, past. We've never done this. We could swap games and swap then games. review them again next week. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, um, I'll log into your Switch before I leave, so you can download yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, for, for the record, I'm bad at 2D games. So, like, I, okay, I don't think I've ever gotten past like World Three in a Mario. All game. 2D games. Like, yeah, like um, Sid Meier's Pirates, for example. Oh, uh, that doesn't really. It is yeah, by definition of, a 2D game. Is it? Yeah. It's like a top-down game. Oh, I guess the combat's. But then You're, the combat is sort of technically 2D. 2D. Yeah, that. But that, but it's it's yeah, not yeah, it's, it's not what you meant. Yeah, totally, totally different. Um, you're not bad at 2D games. You're bad at platformers. 2D platformers. Yeah. Yeah. De- yeah. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I couldn't. I could not get past the first level. I rage quit. Went to the menu. Looked at the settings. And then there was like turn on 99 lives. Turn on friendly restarts. Turn both of those on. Played it more. Still couldn't beat it. Wow. Quit. I was. I was done. Wow. It's done. Yeah. That's a bummer. It's, Were the graphics good? Um. Yeah. They're they cute little Halloween the characters. the music and stuff. good? No. Really? I don't know if it's like it said. It had charming chip tunes. Not the first level. Mm. <laughs> I did not like the music on the first level. Bummer. Um, maybe the music gets better. Is it more like Game Boy or Super Nintendo or like what era of game would you fit it into? Or is it like a modern two D platformer? Um. Well, I haven't played many modern two D platformers. Well, modern two like, D platformers don't feel like old games they feel like felt metroid like, dread like is a old, modern 2d yeah, platformer no, no. it felt like an old game okay for sure yeah. like like mario or like yeah yeah kind of like, like super mario. mario world um or land so sorry. i played the one on the snes that's the mario i played the most yeah it's similar to that wait is it world or land uh, i'm pretty sure it's world on the snes super mario world yeah i don't remember um yeah not a not for me bummer but well, maybe I'll like it. It was only five bucks, and I had enough uh, credit on the eShop. So oh, I just used that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I didn't. Um, I think I had like a dollar on there, and I used it towards it. Um, yeah, Pumpkin Jack is a uh 3D action platformer. Mm-hmm. Um, and the premise of it is that um, the devil um is bored. Okay. And he wants to shake things up, so he sends a demon pumpkin to the world, and you're the bad guy. You s- you don't sound very enthused <laughs> by uh, this it story. Was, it's a pretty dumb story. And, like, the op- the cutscene was, like, five minutes. Oh. It was like, oh, my gosh. And then so it was, like, fully voiced and really well produced and everything. Oh, okay. And then once you get into the game, no voices. Oh, that's a bummer. It's all like, huh, and it all da 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 It reminds me of, like, a... Uh, Xbox PS2 game, sure. um, in that sense, 
Um, so you'll have like an action platforming combat section, and then you'll get into like a on rails, um, like cart game or like an escape sequence or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the gameplay's fine. Um, the controls aren't super tight. They're kind of loose and flowy and imprecise. Okay. Um, so they're not great. Um, every time you attack or jump, it makes the same sound. There's no variation. Mm. So every jump is huh, huh. And if you double jump, it's huh, 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 huh. You know, like yeah. it's just the same all the time. Um, and maybe 15 years ago, I would have given that a pass. Sure. But now I'm just like, it's annoying. Um, it's fine. I don't know. I played long enough to get a second weapon, which didn't really feel like it changed anything. It just mm. looked different. Sure. Um, there are a bunch of skins that you can unlock and those are kind of okay. fun. But did it um, make you feel like, like Halloween fun? Like, yeah, it's got the Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you really need something Halloween to play and you like the 3d action platformer, it's, it's a fun little sure. time. If you like Stan Halloween and you like need a game, this is a very Halloween like themed game. I mean, that was, the it's goal, got right? the, it's got the spooky, like, um, but oh, like sure. the whimsical spooky, um halloween vibes mm -hmm. you know um and i got even more of that nightmare before christmas kind of sure like playing it and you know like the -oo, yeah. kind of like you know it's 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 in that genre for sure so yeah it accomplishes that it's fine like i i just got kind of bored after the 45 minutes i played yeah. it and then once it takes a long time to load when you die oh. and so when you're bored and, you're and you die you're like eh, you i'm out a lot so i died like eight times that actually is kind of a lot a lot but if you like touch the water you die so oh, okay so um, it's some red dead redemption <laughs> yeah a little bit worse than that but uh, yeah i mean sounds like, like it's if you get your feet you wet you die oh okay yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah it was fine but you should play it and let me know what you think and i'll play yours yeah yeah we can do that do a little swappy so. swap We've you got, shop, I shop, you shop, let's swap. Let's see, because we've got did one Did you hear more. what I said? Yeah, I did. It that was, was good. It was all right. No, that was right. good. Okay. Um. Yeah. No, I like that. We can do it. We, we can... For, for future, what are we going to do? Someone can do call a let's swap on the eShop, I shop, you shop. eShop, I shop, you shop, let's swap. Yeah, exactly. That's really hard so, to say. And then the following week, we, we do the same segment in okay. reverse. But yeah. Our final podcast in October will be next. Well, w the next podcast that comes out will be November. But oh, it'll come uh, out in November. Yeah. So. Oh, bummer. That's all right. Nice little end. Yeah. Wrap wrap up little spooky little. season. Cool. Well, we're we're done with the spooks and and gooks and um, the last remnant of that will be our you shop yeah. I shop you shop let's swap. And that'll be next week. Got anything else? I got nothing else. Me either. Um, what I do have is gratitude, Luke. Gratitude for our listeners. Yes. For constantly tuning in week to week. We have a very small, very loyal fan base. Yes. And we appreciate you. Not loyal so enough if you're to here ask questions. And you're listening. Drop a question. Halloween forever in the comments and we will like it. Do a little like on it. And uh, that'll be a very prestigious like and feeling that you have because... Well, most of you know us, and, um, you know, it's for clout. Yeah. You know? Yep. <laughs> Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, and clicking that bell. Bye. Bye.